Hi, my name is Dr. Rachel Tuvey. I'm a physiotherapist, researcher and lecturer with the physiotherapy department at the University of Melbourne. It's my pleasure to record this video to talk with you about my most recently published paper in developmental medicine and child neurology called Task-Specific Training for Bicycle Riding Goals in Ambulant Children with Cerebral Palsy, a randomized control trial. I would like to thank my co-authors, which include my PhD supervisors, as well as the consumer advisors, children and families who participated in the study, research assistants, trial therapists, and all of the other support I received from other leaders in my area and other students and volunteers who supported this work. I would also like to acknowledge that this study would not have been possible without a grant from the Physiotherapy Research Foundation. First of all, I'd like you to meet Leon. Leon is a 14 year old teenager with cerebral palsy who is classified GMFCS level two. Leon wanted to participate in this study because he had the short term bike riding goal of riding a two wheel bike with close supervision greater than 50 meters by the end of the training week. He also had a medium term cycling goal of participating in the bike riding activity at his school camp in three months time. Like Leon, many children with ambulant cerebral palsy have goals to ride a two wheel bike. However, a lower proportion of these children can ride at each age compared to their typically developing peers and those who do learn to ride learn later. Two wheel bike riding is a fun and engaging childhood activity and a potential means for children to participate in physical activity. However, there is little specific evidence to guide therapists and their families for children who do have bike riding goals. So the aim of this study was to determine if a task specific physiotherapist led group training program is superior to a non-specific parent led individual home program for attaining two wheel bicycle specific goals in ambulant children with cerebral palsy. The inclusion and exclusion criteria are listed on this slide. We define the primary outcome as attainment of at least one goal to an expected or greater level on the goal attainment scale at T1, which was within a week of the intervention. Secondary outcomes related to goals included goal attainment as defined for the primary outcome at T2 and the goal attainment scale T score at T1 and T2, with T2 being three months following the program. Selection of secondary outcomes was guided by the family of participation related constructs concept, which was proposed by Christine Imzel a few years ago. This model conceptualized participation as not only being there, so attending, but also being involved, bringing in both attendance and involvement as key components of participation. There is also a dynamic relationship between participation and the child's preferences, sense of self and activity competence. Thus, outcomes in this domain in this study were collected relating to bike skills, participation in bike riding, functional skills, physical activity, self-perception and health-related quality of life. The interventions tested in this trial were informed by previous studies and pilot work. Those participants randomized to the intervention group participated in a week long training program that involved a task specific approach guided by motor learning theory. It was goal directed, it was conducted in a group of three to five participants and their parents, it was led by a physiotherapist and involved parent coaching, it was conducted at Parklands. So the training actually took place in ecological settings and involved two hours of program per day for three days, as well as a home program for the remaining days of the week of about 30 minutes per day. Participants randomized to the comparison group 
were involved in a non-specific parent-led home individual program, whereby parents were given generic information on the safety of bike riding and bike, bicycle fit, including helmets. Families were aware of the goals, but they conducted the program or attempted to achieve their goals in the home setting or in community settings. Parents were provided a phone call to support them from a physiotherapist at the midpoint, but no specific training tips regarding to task specific training were provided. They were encouraged to do at least 30 to 45 minutes practice per day to try to match the dosages across the two groups. Here's Leon again, who was allocated to the task specific program and you watch this video and see him participating in the three-day component of it. So on day one, we started off by focusing on bike handling skills, such as getting on and off the bike. Sometimes this was done with the pedals on, but sometimes the pedals were taken off to make the task more achievable, similar to things like walking and scooting on the bike. We tried then pedaling with the pedals back on, working on different surfaces, such as on grassy surfaces or firmer surfaces like that cricket pitch. By day three, we had parents even more involved and we were often focusing, depending on the child's goals, on independent riding. You can see here that his mum is able to let go. Sometimes there were minor crashes, but we avoided any adverse events. And by the end of day three, Leon was able to achieve his short-term goal of riding 50 metres with close supervision without any support. He even goes up a small hill. We had 109 people who, and young people who were assessed for eligibility with 62 of these ending up enrolling. 31 um, children were allocated to either group with 56 uh, who returned for the first follow-up and 45 children who returned for the second three month follow-up. Selected baseline characteristics are shown here and were largely similar between the groups, except that children in the comparison group had a higher level of bike riding skills and self-perceived bike competence. As you can see from this forest plot, children in the task-specific program had 10.4 times greater odds of achieving expected goal attainment at T1 and four times greater odds of achieving goal attainment at T2. In real terms, this means that there were 24 children in the task specific program who achieved goal attainment compared with nine in the home program. These results held on sensitivity analysis by GMFCS level. And what about Leon? Well, as you saw, Leon achieved his short-term goal and he was also able to achieve his longer term, medium-term goal, which was participating in bike riding at his school camp after the task-specific program. In summary, the task-specific program was superior to the parent-led program for the primary outcome of goal attainment, both immediately after the program and at three months after. Results also favoured the task-specific program for self-perceived bike competency at the short-term time point and involvement in bike riding three months after the program. There was an evidence of a difference between groups on our intention to treat analysis for the other outcomes. The task-specific program was also feasible with 27 of the 31 children allocated to the intervention group attending all three days and both programs were safe and we didn't find any adverse events related to participation in either program. So 
In summary, this study is the first quality powered randomized controlled trial to focus specifically on attainment of two wheel bike riding goals in children with cerebral palsy. The opportunity for this population to learn to ride through a safe and feasible and importantly evidence-based program now exists. The task specific program provides guidance for clinicians around service delivery for achieving bike riding goals, including practice setting, structure and dosage. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoyed this study.